the In Command series. All right, take a look at the back of this thing, a Denon AVRX 6500H. Look at all the inputs and outputs this thing has. But right off the bat, look at those connectors down there. And then these on the other side too. They've been kind of bashed in, so I wonder what's going on. So I've got the top off. Let's flip it around, take a look at the inside. How many channels does this thing have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven channels. Take a look at the output transistors. So they staggered them, it looks like. Look at that. And they're five leaded transistors, it looks like, not just standard three lead transistors. Denon DHCTA3. Are they both the same? DHCTC3? Oh, an A3, so it's a 2SA transistor, and a C3, 2SC transistor down there. Is there a fan? There better be a fan. Oh, wait. There's one fan, two fans, three fans. Okay, because this thing is going to make some heat. The In Command series. Well, the customer says it has the uh, blinking red light of death, so hopefully it's... Just a simple power output problem because, wow, look at all these channels. Well, let's go ahead and test it and find out what's going on. I don't see anything. Just doing a quick visual inspection down here. The emitter resistors all look good. Not seeing any defects there. Nothing burned up. Right off the bat, that is. But let's go ahead and fire it up and see what happens. All right, here we go. Power on. And a blinking white light, AV surround receiver. And the speaker relay closed. I've got a solid white light now, what is going on? Look at that thing, 11.2 channels, 250 watts. That can't be per channel. That power transformer is way too small for 250 watts times 11. Maybe total power, yeah. Okay, so, well, I'm gonna get some speakers hooked up to it and see what happens. Well, I'm on the tuner input, and I get audio, but only on one channel. But if I go to, I have my MP3 player connected right here, but if I go to media player, there it is. I get no audio whatsoever. So I'm wondering, is it possible? And it did go into protection one time because I think this wire shorted out because look how close it is. It's almost touching the chassis. They're both pushed back in. So I'm wondering, could it have a problem on the audio input board as well? All right, so I just did a full reset. <laughs> Now I'm getting a CD audio and it tells me it's got analog input. But once again, I only have it on one channel. So let me go ahead and disconnect the other channel. All right, so I disconnected the right channel. I've only got audio on the left side. So let's go ahead and disconnect the left and connect the right. All right, so only the right's connected right now and I get nothing, no audio whatsoever. So. I'm thinking that jack, which is the front right, I'm thinking that one's damaged because I've got the left disconnected. But if I reconnect it, you can hear the audio. Disconnected, no audio. All right, so a couple of things I wanted to check on this because I'm only getting audio out of one channel on this unit and it is the front left. I'm not getting any audio out of the front right. Well, I wanna to go to the audio output, the little cards individually that service each audio output channel here. And I wanna turn up the volume a little bit and make some AC measurements on the emitter resistors. This one is the front left, center, and front right. So I know the front left is working. So if I turn the volume up, I should be able to see some AC voltage on the emitter resistor right here. Let's try to go on to millivolts, see if that works better. 
and you can see the bar graph on the meter is corresponding to the music. So now let's go to the front right, and I see the same thing on the front right. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the one speaker that is currently working. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my lead, and I have this connected to the other speaker, and I'm just going to attach my probe lead right here, and we'll go ahead and probe the front left, and I hear audio on that one, and let's check the front right. And so that tells me that both amplifiers are working. So we've got some kind of a problem between here and the speaker terminals on the back of the unit back here. So unfortunately, I think I'm gonna to have to pull this thing completely apart to get to that bottom circuit board. Well, the mounting tab for that one is completely broken off. Man, I wonder if I can find some of these things. Holy moly. This one over here, absolutely loose. There's no way it's connected to the circuit board anymore. The rest of them seem to be pretty good though. So now the fun part, taking the guts out of this unit. Now well, let's unplug the HDMI cable from the front. Clip the zip ties and get it out of the way. This is the standby power supply. Remove it completely and set it aside. So it looks as if this whole thing may just simply lift up and out once everything's disconnected. So disconnect that ribbon cable. Let's see if we made any progress. And we're almost there. Well, that wasn't too terribly bad. They've kind of engineered this thing so it comes out halfway decently. Man, look at the size of those filter caps. 15,000 microfarads, 73 volts. Those things are very stubby, large capacitors. Well, this thing may not be that bad. So next I need to go ahead and pull the circuit board completely out of the unit. Probably gonna be several screws. Unfortunately, I've got to move the transformer because the screws for these regulators that you can barely see down here are underneath the transformer. Way to go, Dinon. So let's go ahead and just disconnect this one connector. Yeah, I wonder if there's a way that I can, I mean, I can, I can obviously hot glue it. I don't have epoxy, I would epoxy it if I did. But maybe a big glob of hot glue, get the job going once again. And of course, I'm gonna have to fix that. I'm gonna have to pound it back flat again. Same thing over here on the other side. But let's try to get the board up and out of the unit and see what the bottom looks like. Well, let's see if we can get the power transformer out of here easily. Well, so far so good. All right, power transformer is up and out of the unit completely. Next, we need to go ahead and take these regulators loose and these two bridge rectifiers right there, all the rest of the screws that hold this thing down, and we can take a look at the bottom of it. I know it probably doesn't matter, but I went ahead and put some witness marks on these connectors right here. I believe these are the three fans underneath. We can get those unplugged. Well, that was much simpler than I had anticipated. Uh, just go ahead and make sure you put different witness marks on each connector. So I did a little different orientation for each connector. That way they can all go back the same. You don't get them confused that way. Now let's take a look at the bottom of the board and look at the carnage. And that's kind of what I was expecting to see. Positive lead is broken completely free from the circuit board. And same thing with the negative lead. 
But the good news is, I think I can run some jumpers on that guy. We'll just solder it back to the board as necessary. Can definitely see this trace right here is what feeds the positive. And then this trace right here is what feeds the negative lead. So I think that's going to be a, a relatively minor repair. I mean, I've already got like an hour just getting this thing torn apart. It really wasn't that bad as far as things go. So now as far as the back panel goes, I think I can just take it and we'll just put a little block of wood under it, smack it with a hammer a few times, get this thing flattened out once again. Same thing over on this side, get all these flat once again. Uh, probably have to repair those connectors somehow. I'm not quite sure how, especially this one that doesn't mount anymore. Although it, in, integrally, it's still in pretty good shape because the three circuit board connectors are still attached firmly. But I would like to be able to use that screw hole May see hot glue to the rescue once again, hard to tell. Well, that definitely looks much better than when we started. The divots and whatnot are completely gone at this point. Pretty darn flat. I think the uh, connectors will actually snug it up into place. It's got a little bit of a warpage to it. Nothing like when we started. Well, it may not be the prettiest thing on the planet, but it's repaired. I've definitely seen worse, but I've seen better too. A little bit of hot glue. Fix up that connector right there. Glued it down to the circuit board. Added a piece of wire right here. Ran it back through the bottom of the board where it was broken off. Went ahead and added a second piece right there. Looped it around this connector so it's solidly connected right now. Now onto this connector. Same thing. About a pound and a half of hot glue on there. Nice and tight. It's not going to go anywhere. As long as it doesn't get slammed into the back panel once again, I think it's going to be perfectly fine. Okay, all back together. I got the jacks squared away on the back of the unit. Everything fits. Nothing's bashed in at this point. Let's go ahead and power this unit up and see what we get. Power on. First relay click. Second relay click. Waiting for speaker relays. Speaker relays engage. Let's give it some audio. Well, it's working, both channels. So if I remove the right channel input, I get only left. If I remove the left channel, I get only right. It's working absolutely perfectly. Well, I think my customer is going to be very happy because this thing retails at over $2,000 and it just had a little bit of physical damage. Man, the thing looks good. It sounds really good. This thing is a powerhouse. It's rated at 140 watts per channel times 11 channels. I'm not sure how long it would actually support that because this power transformer is actually pretty small for that kind of power output. Well, that's it. It's repaired. Just got to put it back together and get a hold of my customer. This one was actually dropped off locally. So I'm going to let my customer know that it's ready. He can come up and pick it up. I certainly hope you enjoyed the video on the Denon AVRX 6500H. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can email me norcal715videos at gmail.com. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, once again, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.